Hello and welcome to Orientalism at the Noma, or New Orleans Museum of Art for long. The neoclassical facade of this building uh, does not do the inside justice. I could spend the whole assignment just talking about the building, but that's not what we're here for. Uh, before we proceed, uh, we will be discussing sensitive topics. If you can stomach, if you can't stomach them, there's no shame in stopping this podcast to go consume another piece of media that won't hurt you. Do what you have to do to take care of your well-being. Um, but if you can stomach them and you're willing to listen, thank you. Uh, so before we get into the real uh, meat and potatoes, uh, I want to make sure that we define our terms. And I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So uh, we need to start by defining and understanding what Orientalism is. Orientalism is usually uh, it's a genre of media in which uh, it could be art, it can be dance, it could be music, it could be movies. Um, but these forms of this genre usually is about the Eastern world. It's made by people who live in the Western world in which they project their stereo a stereotypical view of the Eastern world in said pieces of media. Um, Orientalism has existed as long as uh, humans have basically distinguished between European and Asian culture. There's many forms of orient Orientalism, I'm sorry, it's, it, it gets tongue twisty after the fifth time you say it, um, but there's many forms of Orientalism. Uh, it just depends on which Eastern culture, ethnic group, country is being focused on. Um, Orientalist art became really popular in the late uh, 18th century, and for most of the 19th century it was a common genre that we see. Um, because it was a common genre, it lasted through the Romantic period, the Realist period, and the Impressionist period. So you will see um, elements of that when we start looking into examples of Orientalist art. Um, and Orientalism still very much exists today. Um, if you are watching this video, um, you'll see that we have Aladdin up. Uh, Aladdin, I don't know what country or region they were trying to encompass within Aladdin because Aladdin's outfit is Turkish, the Taj Mahal is Indian, uh, the story it's based off of in, um, I'm completely blanking on the original book title, I believe it's A Thousand and One Arabian Nights, but the, the story that it's based off of actually took place in uh, Africa and China. Um, they took a lot of creative liberties, as you can see, and instead of creating an Arabic story, they created a story full of stereotypes. Another really good example of Orientalism that a lot of people uh, don't really think of as an example of Orientalism uh, is Othello by Shakespeare. Um, this painting is in the Noma. It's not the painting we will be focusing on in later on, but this is a really good example of the stereotype of aggressively lustful and jealous brown and black men. That's a stereotype that we still, pers that still persists today. Um, during the British attempts at taking over India and then their eventual attempts at taking over India and then India's multi various uh, rebellions and such, there would be a lot of war rape propaganda against uh, Muslims, Hindus, uh, Africans, basically anyone the British or Europeans in general were trying to overtake. And Othello uh, in Shakespeare's story, if you've read or know the whole thing, I know it's not his most famous work. Othello is a Moor. Um, Moors are a specific ethnic group that are from Africa. They live in parts of Europe. 
And so you can see how him killing his wife in a fit of jealousy can be a little problematic, to say the least. So a very notorious Orientalist painting painter, excuse me, was named Fabio Fabi. He was Italian, he was born in 1861. A lot of his work and a lot of uh, Orientalist work in general focused on sexualizing North African, Middle Eastern, and uh, South Asian women. Fabio Fabi, he really focused on North Africa, especially Algerian and Algeria and Algerian women. Um, in a lot of these paintings, you can see that the woman is the object of the painting. She's not depicted as a person, she's depicted as an object for sale, an object for uh, others to consume, and not a person, which is also a stereotype about the Middle East that we still endure today. Um, there are many other artists from all over Europe that did this too. Uh, so it wasn't just Fabi, Fabio Fabi, he's just a really notable one. Um, but because we were developing photography in the 1800s, we actually have pictures of what these women looked like and what they wore. So a lot of times uh, what we saw was just projection um, because it was easier to sexualize and demonize these women to make themselves feel better, to make the, the Eastern world look scary and bad, and honestly, it helped later, well, actually, not later aid, it helped aid the current uh, imperialist agendas at the time. But in contrast to Fabi, we have Gaetano de Martini. He is also an Italian painter who was born 20 years prior. Um, not much is known about him because he was not that famous, but he was also an Orientalist painter. He also painted the women of North Africa. And as you can see, the way he depicts them is very different to the way that Fabi depicts them. In these, these, in Di Martini's paintings, these women are the center, they are the focus, they are themselves. Uh, they don't need to be an object for the men, for men's attention. They don't, their bodies are not being commodified, they are simply existing as they are. So, when I saw the tambourine girl. It felt like a breath of fresh air after walking through an exhibit that felt uncomfortable, um, to put it lightly. Um, the tambourine girl stands out to me so much, especially in comparison, because there's no need for this hustle and bustle of color. Uh, she stands out because he wants her to. He wants her to be the object of your affection, not the object of your consumption. Uh, he paints her as she is she has an expression that is comparable to Mona Lisa's, where you're not quite sure if it's a smile, but you're not quite sure if it's a frown either. She looks like someone you're about to greet as you're walking down a street, or, or someone you just made eye contact with. She looks... She looks human. She doesn't look like she has to be anywhere. She just looks like she wants to be there in this frame. She looks like she wants to stare back at you instead of doing whatever activities that were being done in the other paintings. Uh, the color is something that I, 
absolutely adore in this painting because it's very it's very monochrome as I touched on earlier. There's mostly browns and and some cool blues and greens. Um, there's not many overt warm tones. The warmness is all in her her skin tone and her tambourine um, and her her dress. It's not something it, that that warmth that we get from a painting is more so implied than shown. You only you don't see her in the context of like weather or a sky or a beach, you see her in front of a building, which is really distinct to me because not only is it an opportunity to show off your skills as a painter, because if you, you can paint the the complex geometries of uh, Arabic architecture, uh, but it gives her uh, another chance to stand out. Um, because she's not having to fight for the for the viewer's attention, uh, as is as in the other paintings where there is like maybe twenty people and you know there's people dancing and there's people playing the drums and there's a lot going on and there's decorations everywhere and granted there are decorations in this uh painting, but they serve to complement her rather than contrast her. Um, she looks like she's about to, to get up and, and grab the, the peacock feathers behind her and be on her way as soon as she wants to. She's not, um, she's not over-sexualized. The way that her shawl kind of slips off her shoulder, it doesn't look intentional. She's not trying to lure you in with her body. She's trying to lure you in with her expression. And honestly, to see an Asian woman depicted in the mid 19th century in such a refined way is a breath of fresh air and don't get me wrong obviously like south asia the middle east everywhere we had our own everywhere had their own art styles and we're making very refined portraits of women from these eras at the time but you can't really say the same for europe when their main goal wasn't to learn about these other cultures it was just to depict what they thought they knew about the other cultures uh, which again is still a problem that we face today. Um, and Orientalism as a genre is problematic. It's messy and it's hurtful, I'm not gonna lie. But um, there were still so many artists that were willing to learn and instead of portray men as these horrible, lustful creatures, they portrayed them as scholars and spiritual enthusiasts. And instead of, there were artists who didn't want to portray these women as harlots. They wanted to portray them as the women that they were. And it's such a sense of relief that even, even though we live in times where, we, there were times where, well, that's, this is a debatable topic, but in times where we see a uh, race and racism being something that people are not interested in learning about, um, because a lot of people like to say they want to learn about other cultures, but you have to really be open-minded when you do that, especially when it comes to history, because we have our own perspectives from the own culture, from our own cultures that we grew up in, in our own time periods that we grew up in that are uncom that will make us feel uncomfortable when we try to examine other people's and uh, our past and whatnot. Um, 
so to know that they were people who were still willing to look over the stereotypes at a time where it seemed like the stereotype dominated is very relieving. <laughs> um, I love this painting so much. It is now my uh, wallpaper on my phone. Um, I don't have enough words or enough time to explain uh, all of the things this painting makes me feel. Um, but the best way I can put it is it feels like looking into a mirror into the past. And it's always very comforting, but also very scary that as humans, we've always been this way. We've always been problematic and messy and kind and open-minded or closed-minded and it's fun sometimes. Like right now, when I look at this painting. Um, but when I look at the others, it's not so fun. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Um, honestly, I if I have time later this week, I might just record a whole podcast on the architecture of uh, the New Orleans Museum of Art. <laughs> thank you for listening.